Hey there, this is Dan Brown. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you it's a quick time lapse of a model that I've been working on over the last two hours here. So it's a speed build, and what you'll see right now is a basic PDF that's starting from a plan. And then I'm using push pool and grouping geometry here, placing some of the components in uh, within the space here. So this model is a laundromat, and I've created a couple of these for this client. So I already have a library of all the pieces, uh, which makes for a great little speed build because I already know a lot of the uh, intricate little details here. So with these washers and dryers, the front heights are usually the same, and then um, the spacing and whatnot is a little bit different. And from here, I'm creating the door opening and then using a component that is the door front and the trim to place it. And then same thing around here, getting kind of that spacing of each one around uh, just a little bit. For the center bays, I wasn't sure yet of sort of the design, the final design of this. So in some cases, it's a middle bar that kind of runs across. In other cases, it, there's a metal panel that kind of covers all of this. So here, I'm just trying to scale these up, get them all into the space and then see how heavy or large the units look. The left and right sides are uh, identical, so making those components, I can just mirror it. And there you saw a little bit. Sometimes I'll work in hidden line view just, just to kind of make the colors and textures disappear. I'm also using a lot of back edges as a face style, that way I can see through to the CAD file. And then going through, doing all the doors, kind of scaling in the front row sort of doors here, creating the vending machines, inserting these little change pieces, and then creating the little countertop. So for the tops here, we decided um, either to make this all one piece, which looks really, really heavy. Probably not going to be able to make one big, long piece of metal that big. So um, you can take the smallest distance, cut that down for the wall surface, and then create sort of two levels. So you have your height for any graphics and elements that you need, give a little bit of privacy as well. And then you have um, that piece there to cover the machines. I think here I'm looking for, yeah, the chairs. So going in plan view a lot of times helps kind of set those chairs. Just grabbing a carpet material. I'm not sure yet what this play area is going to be, but I at least want to show it as a different texture. And then here I'm using Profile Builder. So I created that little rectangle, which is just a four by three quarter inch profile. And then using Profile Builder, I can go around and create all the baseboards for all this. It's a lot easier than Follow Me. Uh, and it automatically isolates them as separate groups, uh, which is nice. So there's a lot of graphics and branding that are used in this space. So just kind of going around, placing all the graphics, uh, typically where they go. And in this early on, you know, I'm just kind of putting these in as placeholders, and then they might change the wall, you know, material and textures might change as well. But it, it at least is... Um, you know, giving a sense here. Putting in just a generic drop ceiling. I'm not really designing the ceiling, but just kind of throwing enough light in there just to give a repetition there. And fixing some of the pieces and then getting ready to render it, which I had to fix the uh, ceiling tile grid. It wasn't lining up with the lights that I had there. And I'm rendering this in Podium, so it's a that was a, a minute rendering in Podium using just LEM lights, which for a large space like this is super quick. And then go through and just kind of exporting, uh, bringing in some Photoshop. It's still early on in this, so you know not the best rendering to start, but this is at least enough to give a client, the client that I'm working with uh, enough to look at so that they can uh, make a better decision on what to choose. For more videos as well as live and online SketchUp training, 
visit sketchuptrainer.com. You can also subscribe to this YouTube channel as well as follow me 